This section's going to be uh, a little bit different than a lot of the stuff that we've done recently. Uh, both this section, 4.3, and the next section, 4.5, are going to be heavy graphing sections. And, and don't freak out. You are not going to be graphing these things so much. Uh, but you are going to be looking at interpreting graphs and, and talking about aspects of functions that relate to graphical interpretation. So I think if you're a visual person, I think these two sections will be a, uh, hopefully be a, a better fit for you and maybe a little bit easier to process. Because um, everything that we're going to be talking about in 4.3 and 4.5 is going to have to relate to, you know, the difference in, not the difference, it's going to relate to the connections between calculus and the graph of a function. So specifically in this section, we're going to talk about maxima and minima. Fun fact, that is the plural of maximum. The plural of maximum is not maximums, at least mathematically. Uh, so that's what maxima is, just the plural of maximum. And uh, we're going to start by talking about something called critical points. So in the back of your mind, kind of think about where we're going with this, talking about maximums and minimums of a function. And uh, quick shout out to the book as well. The book, um, the book is usually pretty similar to how I do my videos, but you know, sometimes you prefer reading things rather than listening and vice versa. It's usually good to do it in combination. Uh, but specifically in this section, the book organizes it uh, fairly different than I do. I, uh, I decided to re reorganize this section a little bit. And so we're going a little bit different in order than the book, but uh, Again, it should be a good way um, to utilize different strategies, different aspects of learning. Videos and the book are both great, but they'll be a little bit more different, still connected, just different orders um, in this section. So let's start with the definition. Let's C, be an interior point in the domain of F. So whenever you're looking at a definition, you should always kind of piece it, piece it together bit by bit. So we're looking at some point, some value, that's an interior point. What does that mean? Well, if our domain is like, let's say our domain is A to B here. Interior just means on the inside of this, so not on the end. So in this case, it couldn't include A or B. Uh, interior just means on the inside. Let's see, be an interior point in the domain of F um, with either F prime of C equaling zero or F prime of C is undefined. So let's just look at some point on the inside of the domain that either has a zero derivative or an undefined derivative, so either a horizontal tangent line, a vertical tangent line, or a non-existent tangent line, okay? Then we say that C is a critical number. That's our first definition. Underline that in red. C is a critical number, and the point at C, so that's the point C comma F of C, is a critical point. That's the more common, the more common one. And often it's gonna be abbreviated CP, okay? So C is the number, C is the part of the domain where this happens, and the point, which is just the input and the output, the output is just the function evaluated at that input, is that critical point. So the critical point is a point, all right? A point on the graph. Uh, points are those little circles on the graph, and <laughs> just a silly thing to say, but that will come up later. So let's uh, use this definition with some examples. Example ones, find, or let, let's rephrase this. Um, I'll say find or mark the critical points, because in this first one, I'm just going to give you a ton of graphs, and I don't want to label them. I just want the numbers don't matter here. I just want to, uh, I just want to uh, give you some examples. So I'm going to list you like nine graphs or something. And in these nine graphs, these are all just going to be like visual. I want you to just be able to point 
to where it is. So in these first ones, uh, I'm going to draw a graph that looks like this. I want you to look at where the critical point is or critical points. There could be multiple. Where is the derivative zero or undefined? So as I'm copying these down, or again, you can also pause the video if you want to copy them down as well, which would be very good. I want you to kind of visually identify where the critical points are for these functions. All right, so again, I'm just going to keep on giving you more graphs, spend some time looking at these and trying to get an answer. I'm not going to give straight coordinate planes on that, these last ones. <laughs> um, Remember that critical points occur at points where the function is either undefined, sorry, where the derivative is undefined, or the derivative equals zero. Get some piecewise functions here near the end. All right, so interior points, all of these Interior points is going to be easy for these ones. All of these functions have domains that are all real numbers. All of these, well, that's not true. <laughs> all of these functions, except for this function, have domains that are all real numbers. Okay. Um, even those piecewise functions. So we need to look for, all we need to do is just identify points that uh, have uh, the derivative equal to zero or the derivative undefined. So... Here, horizontal tangent line, derivative is zero. Here, horizontal tangent line, derivative is equal to zero. That's the only ones for that first one. Second one, right here, we had a vertical tangent line. The derivative is undefined here. Here, horizontal tangent line. You might want to say that there's something here. But even though the derivative doesn't exist here, the function doesn't exist here either, so there is no, there's no place for the point to occur. Um, a point has to be on the graph, right? The critical point is the point where the input is some input, and the output is the function value there. So the function does have to be in the domain. Or sorry, the critical point does have to be in the domain. I just pet my cat, and I'm really paying for it. Getting the cat hair all over my face. All right, so there is only one critical point in that third graph. And over here, the derivative doesn't exist. The derivative is a limit. The derivative from the left is negative 1. The derivative from the right is positive 1. So the derivative is the two-sided limit. Remember 3.1, the definition of the derivative. Limits only exist if both sides, both limits, exist and are equal. This is, this is why some people record math videos without cameras. They can get all the cat hair off of their nose. Um, no problem. Again, over here, we have a critical point because the slope is zero. Here, it doesn't, it's not super clear, but this is supposed to be a vertical tangent line. Um, just pretend that I drew a very clear vertical tangent line here. This next one is when things start getting a little trickier here. So this one down here is not too bad. Horizontal tangent line right here. But there's also a critical point right here. Right, because the, um, the derivative does not exist at this point and it is in the domain. It's in the interior of the domain. There is not a critical point here because the function is not defined up there. So even it looks like they're kind of would be like a horizontal tangent line from one side. It's not even included in the graph. Here, another critical point. The f function exists, um, but the derivative does not exist at that point. And then the last one, you ready for this? Here are all the critical points. of this function. 
There's a critical point at every point on the function because this is a horizontal line. Every point on this function has a slope of zero. Okay, so that's kind of what critical points are. Critical points are the ordered pairs. So like this one might be like zero comma two or something. I don't know. I didn't give, I didn't mark the graphs because I'm just trying to visually inspect these. I just want to visually show what critical points look like. And then remember that the definition is it has to be in the domain with the derivative equal to zero or the derivative undefined. Okay. That's how you do it graphically. What about analytically? Well, if I have some function, let's look at a cubic polynomial. And I want to look at the critical points here. Well, the critical points are the part in the interior points in the domain, right? CPs are interior points in the domain with f prime of c equals zero or f prime of c non-existing. So what's our domain? It's a cubic function. Our domain is all real numbers. That's the first part. And uh, the second part is finding when the derivative is equal to zero. Well, to find when the derivative equals zero, we first have to find the derivative. We're going to be uh, using the power rule here. Bring down the 3, it cancels. We'll get x squared minus 5x plus 4. That's our derivative. So when does the derivative equal to 0? Well, when that equals 0. So 0 equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. Solve this quadratic equation. Quadratic formula or factor. I'm going to try to factor it. Let's see, we need two numbers. Um, that multiply to positive 4, that add to negative 5. So negative 4 and negative 1 are going to work. So we're going to get x is equal to 4 and positive 1. These are the x-coordinates for the critical points. These are the critical numbers. But the critical points are points. So the critical points here are going to be 4 comma something. They are points and one comma something. How do we find that y coordinate? Do we plug it into this? Or do we plug it into this? We have two functions. Remember that top function, that's the function that gives function values. The bottom function is the slope function, the derivative. That, the bottom function gives us the slope. And if we plug these numbers into the bottom function, we'd get zero because they're critical points. We, that's how we found four and one. They're the points that make the slope zero, give us a horizontal tangent line. So we do want to plug them into the top function. So the function evaluated at four is going to be, I don't know, something. I use a calculator. Let's pull up Desmos. Uh, pull up Desmos. Oh, 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 oh. Having some issues. f of x equals... One third x cubed minus five halves x squared plus four x. Use a calculator to find the function value at four. Should get negative two point six repeating. Um, that's negative two and two thirds, which is negative eight thirds. And the function value evaluated at one is going to be one point eight three or 1 and 5, 6. 1 and 5, 6 should be 11, 6. And now you just fill in the blanks. Negative 8 thirds over here. 11, 6 over here. And then the last thing to check is when is this derivative undefined? So we'll look at this derivative. When is this derivative undefined? Well, you know, our derivative is a uh, quadratic. It's defined everywhere. So this third, this second possibility for a critical point, 
there aren't any here. But that you do have to look at both. Where is the function equal to zero? Where is the function undefined for critical points? So these are our only critical points, and they should be on the graph, and they should match what we know. 4 common negative 8 thirds is right here. I just want to double check, right? Negative 8 thirds, is that good? And 11 sixths, is that great? And the other one was the point 1 comma 1.83 repeating, which is right here. You can see that these points have horizontal tangent lines. And you can see that these are the only points with horizontal tangent lines. And these are the only points where the function, and well, there's no points where the function has a vertical tangent line or no derivative. Okay, so these are the only critical points for this function, and we're good to go. All right, let's do one more. Let's see. Find all the critical points for this function, a rational function. So again, just like before, critical points are interior of the domain where the derivative equals zero or the derivative doesn't exist. It doesn't really fit. So we're going to approach this the same way. What's our domain here? Our domain, this is a rational function, a polynomial divided by another polynomial. And we learned that the domains of rational functions are all real numbers except when the denominator is equal to zero. So all real numbers except when the denominator equals zero. And we just have to find when this equals zero. And then that will not be part of our domain. So subtract one from both sides. Take the square root of both sides. Well, this is not a real number. This is an imaginary number. What that means is that any real number we plug into the function won't cause us to divide by zero. We can never divide by zero unless we're plugging in complex numbers, which we're not, we're not doing. We're only looking at real valued functions with real domains. So do the domain actually really is all real numbers. That's plus or minus i right there. Okay, so interior of domain, again, it's just going to be all real numbers. And we can find when is the derivative equal to zero and when does the derivative not exist. But to do either of those, we do have to find the derivative. So we're going to have to use the quotient rule. And again, usually we label the quotient rule f and g, but we already have an f. So labeling the numerator as f doesn't make any sense. That would be like, you know, you know what that would do? If we labeled the domain as f, then this is what would happen. We'd have infinite recursion because f is something else. So it continually refer to itself and we really got into a problem. So don't do this. We don't want infinitely many... Uh, infinitely many things. So we can name it, uh, let's name the top H. The product rule says low D high minus high D low, square the bottom and away we go. And then we just go off to the sides and say, okay, H of X is our numerator. The derivative of that numerator is just four. G of X is our denominator. And the derivative of that denominator, again, using the power rule, is just 2x. So using the quotient rule here, our derivative is h prime 4 times g, 1 plus x squared, minus h, 4x, times g prime, 2x, all over g squared. We're going to have to do some manipulation here to simplify before finding when is it 0 and when is it undefined. Let's try to fit this all on one page. Uh, we can distribute on the top. Remember, you cannot cancel here. The reason we cannot cancel is because it's not factored. You can only cancel once everything in the top is combined and then factored. This is really the reason that we cannot cancel here. 
So if we distribute, we get 4 plus 4x squared minus 8x squared. That's distributing the 4 and multiplying the second part. And the bottom, we almost always want to leave the bottom factored. Combining like terms on the top, it's going to give us 4 minus 4x squared. And we can factor out a 4. Oh, drat. We're going to have to keep on going a little bit. We factor out a 4, and again, when we deal with rational expressions, factoring is usually a really nice thing for us to do. Take out a 4, we're left with 1 minus x squared. And the reason I said drat is because we can't fit it all in one page. We have to keep on factoring. Again, we want to simplify this, and the, the nicest way to simplify rational expressions is to fully factor them so that you can tell whether you can cancel or not. You can only cancel if things are fully factored. This is the difference of squares and factors to 1 minus x times 1 plus x. And again, the bottom is already fully factored. a squared minus b squared, this form, can factor, but a squared plus b squared, this form, cannot factor any further. So this is our fully factored for derivative. I tried to get that alliteration in there. So we're curious, when is this equal to zero? And when is this undefined? So, see the first part, when is it equal to zero? Well, it's equal to zero when we set it equal to zero. Now this is a rational equation. It's an equation with a rational function. The way to solve rational equations is to multiply both sides of the equation, oops, is to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. The least common denominator here is 1 plus x squared squared. Oh. Well, the left side's really nice, and the right side's really nice too. The right side cancels, that's why we multiply by the LCD, and the left side, we're just multiplying something by zero, it's still zero. So this now becomes a much easier equation to solve. It's just when x is positive one and negative one. And again, we're looking for critical points. So we're looking at the full points, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. So again, we go off to the side and say, okay, what is, remember, we're not plugging it into the derivative. Right, this right here is the derivative. That would give us a slope. We already know the slope. The slope is zero here. We want to know the function value, so we plug it into the original function. f gives the, f gives the function. f prime gives the slope. So we just plug that in. We get 4x over 1 plus x squared is our function. All right. And uh, if we plug in negative 1 and positive 1, positive 1 is 2. Negative 1 is negative 2. Oops. Using the wrong color. Oh, well. The blue and white aren't that different, right? So these are some of our critical points, but they may not be all of our critical points. We also have to check when is this derivative undefined? Critical points exist on the interior of the domain where the func derivative is equal to zero or the derivative is undefined. Well, this is a rational expression. This is a rational function. So the derivative is undefined when the denominator is equal to zero. But just like before, this, ne this doesn't, this never happens unless x is imaginary. Same logic as before. Okay, so impossible for real x. So these are indeed our only critical points. And if you look at the graph, you can see, okay, yes, we do have a critical point here, horizontal tangent line, critical point here, horizontal tangent line, 
There's no vertical tangent line. It gets kind of steep, but not that steep. And the function, yeah, there's no vertical tangent line. The derivative always exists. Function exists everywhere. Okay, so nothing else, nothing else fancy. And that's how you find critical points, and that's what critical points are. So hopefully, as we, uh, you've made a little bit of a connection for critical points and uh, maxima and minima. We'll talk more about that in future videos. Let me know if you have questions and uh, enjoy. I haven't, I haven't stopped the video yet, but I will.